Hi, my name's Joel. It's a lovely day. It's actually Good Friday, but you're seeing this on a Wednesday, which is uh, motivation to get out and run yourselves. I'm at the Devil's Dyke, which is near Brighton. It's fantastic weather. Um, we're going for a run. You're coming with me. Let's go. <music> So today I'm running with Dan Lawson. Dan, thank you very much for coming out. It's a pleasure, man. It's nice to have a bit of company here on my... Uh, it's extremely nice. On I my uh, rarely, jog home, yeah. I rarely, rarely get the chance to uh, run with other people. I'm trying to make, uh, trying to do this more often. So you've come from work today? Yeah. And yeah. So how far have you run uh, not before far. this point? Uh, about 13k or something up right. to here, yeah. Right, and how far is home? Uh, about another... Yeah, 12k or right. something, maybe and like that's, that. That's your regular commute It depends, commute actually. It can be a bit longer. Depends how I'm feeling, whether I want to add miles on at the end or not, yeah. Right. So, um, Dan is one of the UK's preeminent ultra runners, and his list of achievements is absolutely mind-boggling. Um, I've read a lot about you. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, to give you a... Flavor. How many miles have you run on a treadmill in one go? Oh, in one go, well, it was a week. I did get off it. I think it's five, 521, 521 522, miles. something like that. That's yeah. like 75 miles a day on a treadmill. That's yeah, incredible. Possibly, and have you done all the... Uh, it's possibly the worst thing I've ever done. Though. Is it really? <laughs> so what was... Were you trying to raise money? Was that a yeah, charity we were, thing? Yes, we were raising money um, for... Thank you. Nifty overtaking movers. Yeah, yeah. yeah raising money for, uh, I, can't, I think it was a childhood obesity right. charity. Yeah. So it was, yeah, all in aid of trying to break this world record, but did yeah, it was hideous. It? We did break it, yeah. It's fantastic. But, um, but <laughs> uh, we didn't, uh, as the week went on, like the crew, the people who were helping, and obviously myself, we all got, we all were getting very tired. <laughs> like, not much sleep. And so, how many hours a day were you running? Oh, it started off. It was quite all right. It was like maybe like 10, 12 hours, but then right. it started off like getting like, you know, like an hour's sleep. Oh, Jesus! And we didn't fill in enough of the uh, Guinness World Record stuff, so so it's not counted. It wasn't official. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> like we were world record beaters, but but in a way that didn't. Like, it really didn't bother me that like, it wasn't like, you know, with a lot of these things, it's like, like the final conclusion's not the important thing, you know, the, it was such a great week, it was such a, like, that wonderful journey we all had that <coughs> didn't really need to have it, uh, you know, put in the record books. So how many support crew did you have? Oh, yeah, it was a good group of us because it was... We were doing it with, in conjunction with the Brighton of Albion's right. charity. So there was quite a few from the football club and there was probably a core of like five or six that were working really hard to like, help me, but then also to raise money as well, you know? So, yeah. yeah. How much did you raise in the end, you know? I think it was about, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. I think it was about 10 grand or something there in the That's end. amazing. But yeah, like... 500 miles not, a week. Yeah, but not something I'd want to do again. Like, I can imagine. I mean, this is, this is what I run on, you know, for days like this. Yeah. In green grass and blue skies and, you know, the sounds of birds yeah. chirping and being on a treadmill for seven days just wasn't... Uh, <laughs> that just seems unbearable. <laughs> didn't, the furthest uh, I've ever run is three miles on a yeah, treadmill. Yeah. I struggled to find the joy, <laughs> but um, I think it set me up. It was quite early on in my, like, I don't know if you can call it a career, but my ultra running career. And uh, like in races these days, I still use it. Like when I get to low points in races, right. I always have a kind of mantra that right. like it, it'll never get any worse than that. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, that's a good thing. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good thing. So how did you start running? Because you started pretty late, right? 
Yeah, I no, I mean I ran a lot when I was younger. Um, Competitively. A, yeah, I ran like cross countries, and I think I ran my first half marathon when I was twelve. Because right. uh, you could do that in those days. Yeah. You know? um, and then, then I started playing football, and kind of stopped running, and then did you know things that teenagers and people in their early 20s get up to you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah and only came into running kind of i don't know like mid 30s i started running again so what um, what was it that got you to put your running shoes on and why and how did you break through the kind of ultra barrier because I don't know, it's not very well to go running i run every day yeah but i don't run that far yeah i mean i was always quite fit i was I played football, I wasn't a great footballer, but I had a, I had a good engine, you know, that's right. what I used to say. So, so maybe I was always running, but just, you know, on a football pitch. And it, it was, it wasn't like a bet at all, but it was just this, I had this uh, kind of ongoing argument with my mate that, uh, that anyone can run a marathon. Right. Just had, I don't know why, where it came from, but I just used to say to him that anyone can do it. And... Um, basically boiled down to one day me going out and proving to him you know with no training or no nothing I just, just I came up here actually I came up into the downs and ran uh, 26 odd miles on my own yeah I just said to him that it's, it's possible yeah. and that's kind of where it came and then I kind of fell back in love with it you know I've had enough of football yeah um and yeah, I just fell back in love with running. And and then the ultras came because I was just, I was kind of raising money. I was doing different challenges and stuff to raise money. And I think I I planned to run from Mumbai to Goa in 10 days, which is like um, 650K. Jeez. And, but I'd never done anything. I'd never run over than that little marathon I'd done. So, so that was your? Only well, real ma running experience, and you decided to run yeah. from Mumbai to Goa. But I, <laughs> so I thought I'd better check it out, <laughs> like and see whether I could do it. And there was a race, um, a Lon it was from London to Brighton, all yeah. off road, yeah. maybe 56 miles. So I thought, well, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll enter that race. And, you know, because I need to prove to myself I can run 50, 60 miles in a day. So. I entered that race, it was all off-road and I didn't realise that um, you needed to map read. <laughs> right. I just thought it would be fine. So... Didn't what, you come second or something? Yeah, basically. Yeah. I met some bloke on the start line who said he knew the way. So I was like, alright, I'll, I'll stick with you. Turns out he was like, <laughs> like really fast, really. Yeah. So kind of like had to stick with him so yeah and finished second and then you know I enjoyed it and I suppose that was it really yeah um, that's quite an amazing story is your second you want to major come run or not? I'll be right. yeah so from there where did it go well then lots of so I had this charity in India and um yeah, I was raising money for that and so lots of different things. Like I ran the Brighton Marathon four times non-stop. So that, and then, then, talk me through that. You you ran 26 miles uh -huh. and then you did it again. Yeah, so you ran, I ran it like forwards, if that makes sense. Got to the finish and then ran it backwards and forwards and backwards or whatever. Right. But finished the fourth one with, uh, you know, with everyone else. And then a year after that, because I was raising money, so I had to keep on up in the ante. Like. I see, so, yeah, yeah. So year after that, I did it eight, I doubled it, I did it eight times. That's uh, incredible. You know, How long did that take? Uh, don't know exactly. I started on the Friday evening, I think, uh, sort of early evening, and then finished with everyone else, you know, like Sunday afternoon or something. Yeah, right. yeah it's real cool. And then, then I just started, I realised people were bored of giving me money to... Uh, so then I started. Then I started racing. Basically, I got into. I got into racing. Yeah. And what, when you say racing, like Spartathlon and yeah, and uh, Bad Water and 
Bartol, yeah. And, and you did the canal race, right? Yeah, yeah, it was one of my, yeah, first, well, quite early on, yeah, the canal race, yeah. And that's uh, over 100 miles, isn't it? 120? 145. Wow. Yeah. Well, at least it's flat. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of good one for me, like, kind of, uh, works on my strengths, yeah, that race. So what are your strengths? Are you just grinding it out? Yeah, I think I'm better running flat. You know, I'm running uh, like in mountain races. And yeah, the kind of longer, I seem to be better. I seem to perform better over the longer distance, you know, 100 miles plus sort of thing. Right. Um, don't know what my strengths are though. Yeah. But yeah, I seem to be able to keep a, like a reasonable pace going. You know, I don't know. And how do you cope with the fatigue? Because you can't pretend that it's not extremely tiring. Like, um, it must be mentally tough. Yeah, I think it's more mentally than... Obviously, it's physically it's quite tiring. Um, like, yeah, I mean, your legs start to hurt, but you're never... You're not ultra running. Like anything over... 100 miles you're never really you're never like pushing it you know right so you're never like really you know in terms of your like whatever they, they like your cardiovascular system you're never really taxing that that much so the pain is more and the tiredness is more like a muscle aches and and stuff like that but right. as long as they're like in a race as long as they're like equal you know what I mean? As long as your right leg hurts as much as your left leg, uh, yeah, and you're then it's kind of it's almost reassuring in a way because um, it's supposed to be hurting. Yeah, but it, that kind of like shows you that things are going all right. You know, right. Your body's performing as it should be. There's nothing too wrong. But yeah, I think mentally is the biggest. Uh, yeah, it's the biggest strain. It's the biggest uh, uh, thing to deal with. In so how do you running. cope with lack of sleep and hydration and uh, food and all yeah. the other practicalities? Yeah, lack of sleep. It's, it's, I mean, sleep deprivation, it's not so bad. I think in some ways, sleep deprivation helps with, uh, thank you, uh, with ultra running. Because it kind of... Uh, your, your mind starts to shut down a little bit, doesn't it? And it kind of gets rid of, uh, uh, it becomes efficient. So the, the things that it doesn't need to be thinking about, or it kind of stops them. Right. So it, it enables you to come kind of, I think, even a little bit more focused on what you're doing. And, uh, and you seem to, the, the more kind of sleep to vibe you get, the more you kind of lose those kind of, those thoughts that you don't need, you know, those, right. I don't know, seems to happen. Well, I guess but, it reduces your world down to just one foot in front of the other. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I raced this race in uh, China. It's probably the most sleep deprived I've ever been. Um, it was a 400 kilometer race. And I think it took me around 70 hours, just under 70 hours. And there was no sleep in that? There was about 20 minutes sleep, yeah. Jeez. But also, it started at 12 o'clock at night, so we'd already been up like, uh, you know, a good a like eight, 18 hours, yeah. yeah so, geez. in a way, it was like almost like 90 hours. But, um, were you hallucinating? At yeah, that point? massively hallucinating, but it was really interesting how you could just see that it was a GPS race, so I had to follow a GPS. Right. And uh, you could just see how your mind kind of. It kind of worked everything out that, that the most important thing I need to do is just concentrate on this GPS and, uh, and run. And everything else it, it kind of got rid of. And it was bizarre because I had no idea where I was. Like it took that all of, you know what I mean? I just couldn't access that part of my mind. That, so you weren't worried about it? You were just... No, because I had this, I had no idea where I was. I had no idea what I was doing. 
why what, you know what I mean and, and uh, I was hallucinating just ridiculously like I was just in another world and, really yeah and but I just knew like I was looking down at my feet I just knew I had to keep running I just knew that that was uh, that is what needed to happen and um, I, I did I'd come in and out of like uh, I don't know some kind of lucidity you know and and you know I would have moments when I'd be like oh like, where am I what what is this and, I, and these massive deja vu's I remember ringing my my wife at one point suddenly I had some in the middle of the desert I had some coverage on my phone right and I rang my wife and I was like she was like oh brilliant how are you how you doing and I was like I don't know where I am <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> wow. Where am I? That must have shit her Yeah, yeah, she was like, but she was cool. She was like, no, that's all right. You're in China, you're in a race, you're winning. <laughs> just, uh, you haven't got that far to go. But it was just interesting, yeah, how it, you kind of, yeah, just kind of selected mm. the only things. I suppose it's, it's the body's way of doing it, isn't it? It just shuts things down to kind of preserve energy and I mean God how, knows what. How did your body hold up? Yeah, fine. Yeah, like I say, I think, yeah, I mean, we weren't going to super speed, so yeah, body was fine. I think it's more, and I find that more and more now as well, that like after a long race, in terms of like recovery, um, my body recovers pretty well, but it's your, that mentally takes longer to recover, you know? Like some races I wake up kind of having these like, almost like PTSD, like really? nightmares, yeah, for like two or three weeks afterwards, yeah. Three. Like even, I just come back from Jordan, I ran across Jordan. How far was that? Uh, 650k. Unbelievable. But I did it with a friend and it was tough but it was also we didn't make it too tough that you know it was almost a bit like a holiday as well right, right? but even after that uh, for a couple of weeks I was waking up in the middle of the night and having these weird dreams about feeling that like got I was off the trail and I was actually like doing stupid things like moving from the bed to the sofa because I in my mind the sofa was on the trail oh my goodness. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah and after the treadmill run oh, it was like a month of uh, waking up in cold sweats in the middle of the night of like these dreams have been kind of just stuck on the treadmill and uh, the thought of running on a treadmill <laughs> gives me nightmares so I think it is and I think as ultra runners, we don't, um, you know, it's, the body's easier to, you can feel it, it's tangible, isn't it, you know? So it's easy to think we've recovered uh, from kind of feeling our body, but I think the mind is, uh, yeah, it needs, it needs more time as well, you know? Definitely. Right, yeah. So how many miles a week are you running in training? Uh, I've been doing a little bit more than usual the last few weeks, about 140, wow. 145 last week. But I've got a, this is kind of, like I've started to slow down a little bit or decrease my volume because I've got a six day race in, uh, on May the 6th, so I think it's in about three weeks, so I just, uh, yeah, I start to do a little bit less each week, yeah. So most of your running is your commute? Yeah, yeah, it is, I do, a, actually, I, in this kind of block up to this six day race, yeah, I've been doing a lot of just kind of nice, slowish, you know, jogging, into work, yeah, jogging to yoga, jogging back home, jogging, so yeah, combining it all with uh, 
just making running my main means of transport basically right. yeah. um, which is it which is hard in the winter sometimes because it's it's just grim but yeah on days like this you know well that makes it oh, easy man. yeah well, let's wrap it up up the top there then and you can okay run home and i'll run back is that cool yeah That's great it's Lovely down the company. Uh, I ran with uh, Alison Allen. Yeah, she's lovely. In Barbados. Allie. Yeah. She is extremely nice. Yeah. She's made of granite, that woman. Yeah. Yeah, she's tough, man. And hopefully she's back. Well, she's having she's a baby. Quite... Isn't she? Oh, she's having another one? Yeah. Oh, she's not back then. Because she ran a couple of races, didn't she? Yeah, she did the bad water. Oh, no, but recently she's done a couple more. Like, uh, she did a 12 hour race. Yeah, because she ran bad water when I ran, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's great. Always, I always know her as Ali Venti, though, oh. before she got married. Right. Yeah, she's lovely. She'd done 21 miles when she met me. She, she does an incredible amount of miles. She's still doing 200 miles a week or no, something. No, I think she's tail back to <laughs> 150. <Tail away>. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was spectacular. Thank you. Oh, thank you, man. So much, Dan. I hope that's all right. You're right. Dude. You're all right jogging back. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good run for me. Oh, yeah, there's nice. a million questions. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, I'm up for that, man. Yeah, yeah definitely, because you're. What's your next race? Well, it's in Hungary. It's that six days, so it's a it's a one k loop for oh, for six for days. Six days, yeah. Best of luck with that, Dan. That's Sorry, I was taking this off. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, dude. Best oh, no, of luck no, no. in Hungary. Pleasure, pleasure, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the run today. Yeah. All right. You sure you don't want to carry on going back home? Right? <laughs> well, if I keep going, I'll get there, but it would yeah. take me a while. All right, take it easy. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Cheers.